Good afternoon, this is Ashley Smith, the Mayor for Canyon City. Today is our vision committee on November 18th, 2020. I'd like to call this meeting to order and have a roll call, please. Councilmember Dennehy? Absent. Councilmember Gonzalez? Absent. Councilmember Jaquez? Here. Councilmember Meisner? Here. Councilmember Reed? Absent. Councilmember B. Smith? Here. Mayor Pro Tim Hamrick? Here. Mayor Smith? Here. And I did get a message that um, Council Member Dunahy will be here shortly. And we'll go ahead and start our council meeting today with a report from FEDC. You're first on the agenda. We have Rob Brown here to let us know what's been going on. I'd be happy to. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. So I got a little PowerPoint. I thought I would do a just kind of a general overview so some folks had a, an idea of what, uh, what we're looking at in terms of our, of our vision and this is kind of a vision meeting. So I thought I would do that, uh, give you a few highlights of what we've accomplished and just express uh, our sincere appreciation for the contribution that the city makes and for the uh, partnership that we've established. So let me see if our little clicker works here and we'll be good to go. All right. So uh, I, I tell people in the beginning, we, uh, we rebooted FEDC a number of years ago. And when I went out into the world, this is what people thought of when they thought of Fremont County and Canyon City was that, you know, it was a cow pasture. And where I can see, you know, a building and new jobs being created there, a lot of folks were seeing this. And so we had to create some kind of a momentum behind our initiative. And so what we did was uh, an asset assessment. So we looked out into the community and we said, what assets do we have available to us and what can we do to consolidate those into a, a consistent effort? And so each of those balloons represents many different things and there's, there's uh, dozens or maybe hundreds of additional balloons. But this, just to give you an idea, we started to pull these together and then we started to pull it together into a real concept and the concept was if we were a business how would we go to market and how would we achieve our goals and the community's goals and we started to assemble them in this fashion and then what what we discovered when we started to pull those assets together that there were people in our community that were champions and they had the capacity they had the capability they had the skill set so we brought them together in the form of what we're going to call a profit cluster. And that's just an example. That's Alex, our new chairman for next year. You probably recognize the rest of the folks in that group. But the bottom line is it's about people. And in a small rural community, there is no other asset that is more valuable than the people that you bring together. And we've done uh, a pretty darn good job with the city's support to bring our team uh, together. And when we bring them together, then we call this thing a profit cluster. And so in this particular fashion, you see that FEDC is not just a, a monolith. It's a group of like-minded individuals, like-minded organizations, and assets in the community that we can bring together to produce real work and jobs and things that we want to try to accomplish. And then you see those bubbles on the outside. These are new job creation opportunities. Uh, that are coming to our area because of these efforts. Um, we call profit clusters, we call them profit clusters, you know them as these other names, FEDC Tech Start, uh, which is right downtown Canyon City, a newer venture which we call Well Start, which is a group of people that are working in the behavioral health, uh, fitness, uh, wellness of all sorts and creating jobs in that market. A good example, we have one business that started under our WellStart banner and they've already hired 11 people. So this is an example. AgStart is a new one that we have underway and ArtStart and, and all of these different things. And our theme before COVID this year was just start it. And now I think we want to say just end it all. Let's get it over <laughs> with and move on. But that's our theme for the year, just start it. And we're all about business startups. And then when you assemble all these, you have what we like to refer to as a business in a box. And we think this concept that we're rolling out in Canyon City and Fremont County is something that other communities are going to benefit from as well. And that is uh, opened up opportunities for outside funding from other uh, agencies across the state. 
So business in a box is where we're going with that. Now, a key to this is a regional specialty. And our community, uh, especially with Department of Corrections and Bureau of Prisons and other types of entities in our community, we've been tasked with the safety of our community for a very, very long time. And we take that as an, a unique asset uh, that we have that other communities don't have. And so we've done a really good job of exploiting those types of enterprises in our area and you'll see businesses like Second 61 that have gone from an idea to 22 employees in a very short period of time and they go on can you know protecting our interests as a community that's what they do and we think we're good at that uh, other communities in the state may not be good at that but they'd be good at other things and in order to put rural jobs into our communities we're going to have to leverage assets from every community and find out what they're good at and do their asset assessment. And then these companies will be able to push jobs out into our community, not just ours, but everywhere, because unless we succeed together, we're not going to succeed at all. So that's our business in a box concept. So I, I put some milestones together, and I know this is an eye chart, and I went back uh, to where we started this whole program in 2017 when we came out of the chute with this thing called the profit cluster concept and, and tech start and so forth and if you fast forward you're going to see a lot of accomplishments there uh, most recently we had uh, the uh, SBA administra uh, administrator uh, Jovita Carranza actually visited our community and when she came here she came here to see what can the SBA do the Small Business Administration of the federal government to try to improve business opportunities in Fremont County uh, that is unprecedented and she came because she heard what's going on here from a momentum point of view when she left, uh, she immediately went back and created a new program that she announced, and we're actually working on that now to work on a profit cluster concept at the federal government level that would provide funding and so forth to even business startups coming through the SBA right here in Fremont County. So we'll be working on that uh, through the end of the year and into next. Um, I wanted to give you some ideas of the, you know, what have you done for me lately kind of a scenario. And these are, uh, did these in the form of a press release, you know, Fremont Economic Development Corporation announces the first 50. And this is for 2020, we've created 50 new jobs in Fremont County. And we're very, very proud of that because these are not, um, the, uh, these are the best types of jobs. I won't tell you what they're not. These are the types of jobs that are career starters. We call them career path style jobs. And we've been able to create these jobs because we've been working with our educational organizations here to generate and grow our own uh, job opportunities and grow our own people in the program. Uh, Techstart expands. We, we had just announced a whole set of new sponsorships and partners for Techstart. And that is what has really driven us into the visibility with these people on the state and the national level now. Uh, and then we recently topped the $1.5 million mark in terms of grants that we've competed for and won. And uh, when I'm sitting here in a position of funding from the city of Canyon City, you may say, well, if you, you, you scored a 1.5 million bucks, why do you need us for? Well, these programs don't provide any operational expenses, zero operational expenses. So we operate FEDC exclusively off the contribution of our members, FEDC and, and Canyon City being uh, significant partners in that aspect. And so all of that money, the $1.5 million, has gone back into the community. And uh, City of Canyon City, as an example, benefited from the alliance that we established and won the EPA Brownfield grant, uh, as an example, and the USDA Distance Learning Program, which we're rolling out now. And these are significant programs that we've been successful in winning because we have this momentum. Keep in mind, FEDC has zero permanent full-time employees. We have none. What we have are two part-time contract employees and a whole bunch of great volunteers. So when you see the work that Techstart is doing, that's 100% done by volunteers. So we clear the way, in essence, for a lot of things to happen just because it's the right thing to do for our community and we're gonna continue uh, to perform at that kind of a level. So here's some examples. Policy Pack makes a contribution to Techstart. 
uh, we were able to get $12,000 in prize money awarded to our startup business community late last year. We did this twice last year, none in this year, obviously. Our first event was in May, and that kind of got waylaid by a, uh, this little thing called the virus. By the way, I'm a tech guy, and viruses just recently used to be something you got on your computer, right? So now we have to look at it from a whole new outlook. Uh, Braver. Uh, business here uh, went to the, ch uh, the uh, China Hacks Accelerator, came back to Fremont County, he's going to be manufacturing his projects or his products here, and we were able to help him through his program raise $280,000. He was one of our first winners of our pitch contest, and he said that $2,000 that he won at our pitch contest kept his business viable until he could win this $280,000. That's a step in the right direction. Uh, you all know uh, Chris Cohen, I'm sure, and, and Second 61. We call them economic homesteaders because when you homesteaded in this part of the world back in the late 1800s, you had to take a real leap of faith that you were going to be able to make a business uh, work out here. And guys like Chris have said, you know what, I grew up here. I feel an attachment to this community. I want to make it work. And he's built this now into a, a real honest-to-goodness viable business, and he's protecting our national security through his program, and he's hiring kids out of Canyon City High School, Florence High School, coming through uh, Pueblo Community College. This is the career path that we all hope for as uh, citizens here in the community. We've got volunteers like Alan uh, Buller. Alan, uh, was, he, he won the, the uh, Talent Champion Award last year, the Apex Award, and put him in a position of very few other people in our community that have had this type of recognition. But why, why did he get it? Because he's bringing kids along, students along, and making them viable participants in our, our job market. And these are some of the folks that are in the program. You undoubtedly recognize these people. There's, uh, you know, the Tech Start meetups that happen. It's happening tonight as we speak. And they, this is the community building component of FEDC. And the interns, you know, we're cranking through 50 interns a year. This is unprecedented for a small community like ours. And we couldn't do it if we didn't have the, the rural P-TECH program, uh, the first one in the state. And now it's just been recently expanded from Canyon City High School to all the high schools in our community. And that's because we keep working with them and we keep pushing it forward. Uh, education is a clear focus of FEDC, and we can do that because of the participation of our members like Canyon City. Uh, and these kids are getting real-world experience learning with professionals that know their jobs and know how to do it, and they're going to take that on to college or their other careers, and uh, we can proudly say that we're creating those right here in our backyard. And we're doing that with a mentor mentee type relationship and those are two mentors and their and their students that are, are here in our community and you undoubtedly recognize them because they're active uh, participants in everything that we do <coughs> and i mentioned that regional specialties component that protection component that we do for our community and our high school placed top third uh, in the national uh, uh, National Cyber League competition. You guys know how the drafting and computer programs have been going at the high school forever. These kids got this opportunity because they're working through programs that are, that are started by guys like uh, Chris Cohen at Second 61 and other member businesses at FEDC. So that's the long and short of it. We're proud members of the community. We're happy to participate in, in all things related to economic development here, and thank you very much for being a member. And I'll make myself available for questions if you have any. Council Member Huckus. Go back to the start of your, your program where you're showing all the individuals, the very beginning. Yeah, uh, he's operating it in the other room. I apologize there. He's, he's jumping as fast as he can. Thank you. Back there. Okay, that was the, the next one there. Okay. I may be ignorant in that, but I don't know any of these folks other than Ashley. Oh, okay? okay. And you say these are people that everybody knows. Oh, what Frank, I would that's, like that's Glenda the Good Witch in the <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What I would like for you to do is start with the gentleman at the top with the smile, 
tell me who he is and his background and do the same thing with each other individual. I'd be happy to, and, and these are just examples. These are just a few of the hundreds of people that we're working with. That's Chris Cohen with Second 61. Uh, that's Alan Buller. He's our talent champion. Wait a minute. At, what's, at, what's his back? What's his educational background? Uh, on each individual person, you're going to okay. I'll do my I'll do my best on okay. their educational background. Uh, Chris is a uh, uh, an entrepreneur. We call him a serial entrepreneur. He's been in this community. He grew up here. Graduated from Canyon City High School. Uh, he went to the University of Colorado, I believe. He's got a degree in finance. Uh, he specializes in call centers and businesses that are related to the uh, federal government and the U.S. military. And so that, that's what I know about him. Um, and and then, that's his business. Excuse that's me? That's his business. That's his business, yeah. His, his Second 61 center, is his business. Yep. Military support. That's right. That's right. Call center, military support. Uh, Alan Buller is retired, and uh, Alan came to us because he had a desire to participate in the tech side of the business. I don't know Alan's uh, educational background, but what I know is that this man has rolled up his sleeves and has helped process uh, dozens and, uh, and soon to be hundreds of interns through our intern program. And he's a recent winner of the uh, Apex uh, Talent Championship contest uh, that uh, is a uh, a contest that you win by recommendation from your peers. So that, that's who he is. Uh, that's um, Mayor Ashley Smith. Um, and uh, I would uh, be uh, remiss to uh, discuss her education because she looks like she's just barely old enough to be in high school. But, uh, you know, if you'd like to comment, you, you certainly can on your background and education <laughs> and so forth. Uh, that's Bill Summers. Uh, he's the uh, principal of Canyon City High School. Um, Bill is a, uh, also a, a local, we call him one of our wayward sons, uh, somebody that was, grew up here and then went away. And, and uh, Bill, I believe, has a military background, as I recall. I think he's a, isn't he a retired colonel? Um, that, uh, Some something background. to that effect, yeah. And uh, Bill's been doing a great job at the high school. Uh, that other person is Brad Rowland. Uh, Brad is uh, our current uh, champion for the Tech Start initiative. Brad has got a long-term career in, in tech. He comes from uh, California originally, but uh, most recently he, he came through Texas, but he's lived here a long time now, and he's the real driving force behind the technology side of uh, Tech Start. Really good guy. And then the guy in the other bubble there, that's Alex Ewers. Alex owns Third Rock Engineering, which is one of the tenants in Tech Start downtown. Uh, Alex is a civil uh, engineer, and he's got five interns working for him right now, learning uh, about engineering and so forth. Uh, he comes from the West Slope of Colorado, and uh, he's joined us here, and he's going to be our incoming chairman for uh, FEDC coming in um, beginning in January. So that that's, like I said, just the group I know of. And, and the reason why I'm asking this question is because this is being televised to the public. Thank you. There. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. And so I think it's very important that, of course, I, I want to know. Yeah. But I think it's also very important for the public to know who's involved, you know, with FEDC in the categories they're involved with because, you know, in a sense, you know, we, we help support you. You do your job to get folks in here and all that. So when people see these faces, now they have an idea of, you know, what they are and their accomplishments and stuff like that. So it's not just a face. That's See, right. That's right. There's something that goes with that face. So, so that's the purpose for me wanting to ask you who they are and whatever background you can provide for me and all that. Because so, I think it's important. I, I don't know if all the other council people know each and every one of these folks that are there, because I know there's a lot of people involved. So I, the one gentleman with the beard, I know I've seen him because he came in the newspaper. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. So that, that face no, that, is familiar. That, that is a, it's a great point that you're making there, and I'm happy to, to, uh, to, uh, to talk about those folks. They're, they're, they're great people, they're contributors, and I call them champions because without champions in the community, uh, we don't have an organization. That is the core. And, so and one other talk. question I have, this will be my last one in that in sense. I know the purpose for FEDC and what their goal is and what to accomplish, and they have accomplished a lot. I, I know we've had struggles now because of the COVID and everything else that's been going on with the economy. And I'm not asking you to give me any specific companies or anything like that. But right now, 
say for the year of ending 2019 and what you have the beginning of the year of 2020, approximately how many businesses, whether they're small, medium, or large, have come to you folks with regards to looking at not just Canyon City, but Fremont County with regards to wanting to establish some type of a business here and that. And like I say, I don't care whether it's a business with five people, I wish it was a business with thousands, You're right. <laughs> but, but we can't handle that. But I think that's also important to the folks out there to realize that, and you guys are doing a good job. So because this is televised, I think it's important for the citizens to realize, you know, what in a sense is going on to your best of your ability that you can give us that information. By, by all means, there's a, the, we, we call them metrics internally. We do about 200 touches a year, and that means a contact point with somebody that either has an existing business or wants to start a business or possibly wants to relocate a business to a Fremont County. So it's usually around 200. This year, we've actually increased that. We're going to be approaching 300 touches by the end of the year. And I think uh, rural Colorado and Fremont County specifically is very attractive to people that are trying to run a business in the metro area where they have all of the complications associated with COVID and uh, all the other things. And I think uh, we have a value proposition that means we're approximately 30 to 40 percent of what it is in these other areas. We maintain a project pipeline of approximately 20 projects and those are projects that we take from that stage where we we call it a touch to actually generating a project and then we give them a code name because in most cases our projects are um, under confidentiality and protected in some in some way and so those projects are are currently uh, under um, you know heavy work and examination by us and we're working on those actively of those at least four or five of them are projects that are going to complete and we're going to put them in place and those are going to represent those 50 jobs that I mentioned and we intend to do that again in 2021 and I will say that we did lose a couple of projects early on to COVID when people just lost momentum uh, you know nationally internationally but I will say many of those have have uh, persisted and we just got a letter of intent yesterday for a new uh, skilled nursing um, assisted living and potentially um, affordable senior housing so we do have these projects in the works and they are generating jobs and those are great job creators and it's also something that's that's much needed in the community and as I am sure you know that getting from a letter of intent to a completed project there's a heck of a lot of distance in there but uh, that's just an example that's uh, top of mind because it, it just recently happened with a, a national firm but we can grow jobs four or five at a time we can't grow them at a thousand at a time but we can certainly get those um, uh, appropriately sized entities for our our community and, and I thank you for the information like I say because this is being you know Absolutely. broadcast to the public out there and all that so and you know with your staff like you say two part-time yourself and everything mm -hmm. and I you know I give kudos to all of the volunteers that you have within the organization that are helping make this a success in those categories that you have mentioned in that. You know, I wish we could bring every one of those people in here and give them a, a big handshake and a hug, but we can't. But I just want them to know from, from me, I really appreciate everything that they're doing to help develop Canyon City and make it a better place for those who live here and those who want to come here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Council Member Meisner. Thanks, Rob. Uh, yes, sir. Two questions. Do you, I know that you came in and talked to us, whenever it was, at the beginning of the urban renewal. Yes. Uh, now that that's, I'm going to say accomplished, at least the beginning point. Understood, yeah. Uh, w what's your thoughts? Yeah, urban renewal is a, a tremendous tool in my toolkit. You know, as a, uh, I like to build things. That's, that's what I've always done my entire life, whether it means picking up a hammer and a nail or it means building, you know, economic viability in rural Colorado. That building things is important. And in order to build things, you have to have tools. And one of the, the best tools that I can imagine is this new 
uh, urban renewal component. And several of the projects that I mentioned are very interested in that. One of them in particular will be a, a significant, um, it will be a significant factor in their decision making to come here. So uh, it's a great tool. It's not well um, known yet, and it's not uh, completely uh, fully baked yet from the, the city's perspective. Right. One of the challenges behind these programs is in order for it to be a full incentive, you have to figure out the financing side of it, and that's, that's going to be a challenge that we're going to work through on all these various projects. But I, I know there's projects that are already starting that are going to take advantage of it, and we've got several in our uh, back pocket that we're really hoping to exploit that from. That uh, that tool. Me. Um, well, let's go ahead and go to Mayor Pro Tem Hamrick, and then we'll come back to you, Meisner. Uh, so, so the uh, to uh, Councilman Hawkes's question of how many, the one one way to start thinking about that is uh, the number of workers at the in the emergent campus, uh, in Wellstart, mm -hmm. uh, in. Um, uh, FEDC uh, Tech Start. What do we have? Thirty-three offices up Tw here. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. It's twenty-two. Yeah. Okay. And they, they're all occupied. They're and they're all occupied. And that mm -hmm. and that and so those are. That's something we don't really see because they're on the second floor. They're not down at ground level. Right. But those are all businesses. That's right. And they're drinking coffee at the coffee shop. And they're buying bicycles at the bicycle shop, and they're uh, having lunch, you know, at uh, at the restaurants. So, you know, it, it is a it is a significant driver, and they're providing uh, rental income to the uh, the property owner as well. So they're they're contributors, um, small contributors, each as individuals, but as a collective, they're they're a pretty good contributor. So if if we just from 2017 forward, if we put in this room. Uh, every person that got a job here in this county, we would be close to capacity in this room, is one way to say it, is, is, is my impression. I, I think you're absolutely correct. And in times of COVID, we probably couldn't get them all in the room, right? The because room. they'd have to stand too far apart. But no, I, I think we, we have um, made that, that, um, that step in the right direction. It, it is so hard to quantify, um, but it is a reality and, and not just the people that are currently in those those roles but the people that have that have uh, gone through those roles they're, they're, it's it's a nice list and uh, to uh, uh, council uh, member Hawke's point of view uh, these are very important people in our community now they're making a difference for all of us so it's um, nice to have them Rob Brown would you say that having all of those professionals at their level of expertise and capacities and masterminding all together on the same floor of TechStart has been part of that kickstart of some of these innovative new ideas that have been executed in Fremont County? Oh, I, I have no doubt in my mind. Um, you know, the, uh, the only con contribution that I made individually was being um, smart enough to know what my capacity was, my limitations, and I reached out and, and was able to align with people that are far more intellectually competent than, than I'll ever imagine. And then when you put them in close proximity to one another, uh, it, it it's becomes exponentially more valuable. And that's the whole concept behind the profit cluster is you put people with a, you know, a component of their being that is, that is similar and it, it takes on a life of its own, and, and you can see that, although it's not a Canyon City project, but at the emergent campus, you know, many of the graduates from TechStart are now starting bigger, better businesses over there. So yes, it's absolutely uh, the key component. That's why I say it's, it is the people. It's, it's the people in this room that are per participating in the process. Thank you very much for being, uh, you know, uh, elected leaders, and it's the people that uh, that you know are in the community that are volunteering and putting in putting their blood and sweat into the programs. Councilmember Meisner. So, it would take Rob Brown to take and have a spin on COVID and using it to his advantage. And I appreciate that. Yeah, you're you're quite welcome. I've been working Positive on that one for thinking. a while. But my <laughs> but my question is, so you know that we recently. Uh, made the decision, I think, on second reading now, to to change our building codes to 2018. Yes. Uh, and I know your involvement in that whole process over the last, at least my five years here. So do you think, uh, I hate to put you on the spot, but you think that was a step in the right direction or 
Or what's your thought there? And just in terms of how that impacts those contractors and building and, and all the things that you get involved with and some of those complications. I realize that's not the solution to the whole problem that we've got. Right. But what's your thought on that change we made to 2018? Um, you know, change is always is, is always a challenge. So the the contractors, you know, are are now forced with uh, into a you know a new change in terms of thinking that through, and that that will result in some lack and uh, lack of productivity. There's just no no doubt about that. But I think the caveats that you added, uh, my, minor modifications that you made to the program, brought it back into alignment with what I think the community sees that that building community uh we've got a robust building community now we've got some good good folks that are doing really good work out there they'll make the adjustment i think it's it's a, a demonstration by city government that they're working in the right direction and that and the other initiatives that you've taken on i think are all pointing us in the right direction and when we can get to the point where those are uh, tools in your toolkit to help you know build building get done I think then then the then the goal will be accomplished. So generally speaking, I'm 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 giving you a thumbs up on that particular thing, but rest assured there will be a little bit of pain in the in the process. I mean, I, I at least my ultimate goal is to build a safe building, but do it with some common sense. Agreed. Agreed. And and I think we're moving there, but getting that paradigm as you know is a challenge. That's that's right. Agreed. Um, Rob Brown, you said that you have some high school students that are getting hired straight out of graduation. That's right. Do you have an estimate on how many students are getting jobs and staying here locally? That I, I don't know that number. I could give you anecdotally that number. When I go to, you know, Alex's, uh, Alec Ewer's office at Third Rock, and he has five of them sitting in there, uh, that's a pretty good sign. Next door, uh, Lester Lamone has one in there, you know, and these are these are interns that are that are actually now doing real work and getting getting paid. So I know it is happening, uh, but I'd have to do a little bit more research to actually give you a, you know a, a a tangible number. But I I I believe it is significant, and I think it's starting to to flip. And, and now that that this uh, the whole COVID situation with kids going away to college, I think that that's having a factor. Um, in in that as well so you know now now they're here so they're going to going to work but bottom line is I think we're making a good good step in the right direction but I couldn't tell you the number okay so. um, anecdotally speaking I've also heard that for some of these um, launches of endeavors there's been struggle finding employees to come and take advantage of these jobs what has been your experience with that? that? That is absolutely the case. And that's not a Fremont County, Canyon City problem. That is a Colorado problem. Uh, it's a rural Colorado specific problem. Uh, the availability of, of talent uh, that you can bring into your business and then you know, nurture and retain and, and, and move up through the, the ranks, th those are hard to come by. And so what we've done there is that we uh, are working with the retail tourism sector, our statewide sector, Region 13, which is our, our county and the surrounding counties, and we competed for and won a grant uh, to create this new Slack network where we're going to actually use that tool to do this recruitment, this training, this upskilling is the the, the term that was coined by the state. And we're gonna upskill these people at every level. So the entry level worker, we're gonna make them uh, one step higher than they were when they entered. Um, and then the ownership, we're gonna make them a better owner and, and everybody in between. And we're gonna use this new tool so we competed for and won the second half of that grant. Uh, so that's for the 2021 year, and that's going to allow us to hire a um, engagement coordinator is what we're calling that person. And that person's job is going to be to look for sources of potential employees, uh, people exiting the military, people in college, people uh, in high school that chose not to go to college, whatever those individual groups are, and we're gonna create an incentive and make it attractive to come here to Fremont County, to Canyon City, and become workers here for our retail and tourism businesses. And we believe that that model works uh, and we have a high level of confidence that it will because we're gonna work hard and make it work. 
And if that works, then we're going to be able to roll that out to other types of sectors uh, in the area, whether that be you know, manufacturing, construction, wh whatever these other entities might be. Because there is a new wave that uh, is happening in, in the country and it's, it's way, the way that people are going into the workforce and we need to be thought leaders on that particular aspect it, for our own survival, right? Mm -hmm. And that's really what it boils down to. I'm a product of Canyon City, uh, Canyon City High School, and I found everything that I needed by the time I graduated to enter the workforce. And I entered the workforce and then went back and got my education and then years later came back to give back to the community. I believe that model is still valid even today. And I know people sitting beside me work for organizations that have people with similar uh, experiences. I know it works. So uh, that, that's how we intend to, to try to, you know, get this particular problem solved. It's an epic challenge. So, uh, you mm -hmm. know, if we can just chip a little corner off it, we'll, oh, we'll awesome. feel an accomplishment. I'm excited about that program. You bet. Congratulations. Thank you. Council Member Meisner. So my third question is, uh, have, you, have you utilized the, I'm gonna, hopefully I want to not screw this up, Rick, the Buxton program at all? Not yet. I, I'm, uh, I'm excited about that. I've talked to uh, Rick and, and, and Ryan Stevens about that, and I think there are some tools that we could deploy there. Uh, haven't, haven't done it yet, and um, I guess I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that I, a new tool out there, and I haven't taken it on yet, but it, it's on the uh, to-do list, and I, I fully intend to, to exploit it. And I think we can do some other creative things with that through this retail tourism sector program that I just mentioned. Uh, and uh, that, that will be one of the many ways that we can do it. Well, so We'd love to see that on one of your bullet points on your next presentation. To by Council. all means, by all means. I think, I think, you know, for a business that's, I mean, we get into these challenges, but I think when we're talking about a business that's potentially locating uh, within the city, then I think that it makes perfect sense for, for our staff to make for sure that all of those Buxton features and opportunities capabilities are, are there for you to be available and, and if you're not getting that which I can't imagine with the guy sitting beside you that it wouldn't happen but <laughs> no, no um, doubt it we will do, we just need to understand yeah. that when we're talking about recu recruiting somebody that's going to be moving within the city uh, we need hundred and fifty percent effort on, on anything that's available from the Buxton to, to help provide that information that that those people would need to make a decision agreed completely I'll, I'll take that on as a personal challenge. We'll get that handled. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Hamrick. Uh, and Madam Mayor, to the, your question was, you know, how many high school students have entered the workforce? One way to look at it is when they're, when they're an intern, they have actually taken their first step into the workforce. And I believe at the beginning of this school year, the intern program had uh, more than 30 slots. That's if right. If I remember the the, the, uh, the approximate number and those were essentially all filled at the beginning of the school year so that that's uh, 30 30 students in the PTEC intern program are 30 students that are going to get the first two years of college free if they complete the program and have real world work experience and have an opportunity to help grow this community and that's yes, that that's the better. second year of the program so similar uh, similar number last year as well amazing um, Council Member Smith. Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to applaud your effort. I think that gardening um, our local talent, especially at CCHS, um, is, is a great idea. I've, I've said for years that we have a lot of assets in the CCHS building, and I think that it's great that we're utilizing those. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, Rick Harmon, I want to invite you to say a thing or two if you wish to as our economic development manager? Yeah, I would love to. Um, I, I met Rob, on a, and you talked about the profit clusters beginning in 2017. They had, we, we talked about them when I met you Two late 2015. Yeah, that's right. um, that concept was already on your mind. That's so, right. you know, it, it, it's, it's really cool to see the, the amount of progress in that whole concept. I worked with him on the Ag Start project before I was working here. As I, I volunteered with him to try to bring a company here from New York, basically. Uh, and that, that didn't happen, but it was really cool to be part of a process and kind of fuel the fire for potential growth and development in the area. 
Um, the, the things that I think about the most are, are momentum. You know, when you, when you see Tech Start, you see the emerging campus, when you see the, the brain trust of people that come together, um, there's just a passion for growth and there's a momentum there that really needs to be seized, I guess you could say. And, you know, the more we can take advantage of that momentum, we can attract other businesses, we can attract um, other industries, you know, and, and then that brings me to the next word is, is partnership. Rob and I have been very good at communicating before I was working here. Uh, I understand the, the whole system of FEDC and how, how that growth kind of is organic. Uh, so, you know, a lot, of, a lot of good things happening, a lot to, you know, I don't want to say big shoes to fill because you're sitting right next to me. You're not going anywhere, but, No, you know, I'm not going anywhere. There, there's a lot of, there's a lot of promise. There's so much promise for this community right now, and that really is a driving force behind growth. Uh, it's, it's, congratulations. It's very, yeah, very, th thank very you um, admirable, so. Um, and as we wrap things up, I'm Rob Brown. I just definitely want to publicly say thank you. Um, the folks we see as some of um, the team members and the other team members that we aren't seeing today, all of them have been significant contributors. They are national leaders That's right. in revolutionizing rural economies. And we are getting recognized nationally for creating um, that opportunity to transform how rural economies can be successful. I'm really proud of that. Um, Thank you, we're proud of it as well. Big game changers for Canyon City and Fremont County. Uh, one, one final word from me, I took uh, well more than my share of time and Cooper is sitting here ready to, to talk about the Canyon City That's Chamber That's why we have Commerce. the partition so there's no violence. <laughs> but but uh, I, I wanted to go and say that um, Canyon City Chamber of Commerce is one of our members. Um, they're one of our partners and they're a critical component of our uh, success in this community as well. And if you look at it as FEDC is the acquisition arm, uh, the Kansas City Chamber of Commerce is the retention arm. And uh, so, I, you know, just to, to, to try to salvage my uh, relationship here, I want to make sure that, that, that you know that the FEDC is in complete support of the Chamber and will do everything we can to, to help the, uh, the teamwork uh, continue. So, thank um, you. Excellent segue as we welcome the Chamber of Commerce's brand new president, Cooper Trahern. We're really happy to have you here. Yeah, thank you all for having me. Looks like you have Haley with you as well. Yes, um, I'd like to thank Rob as well. Uh, I'll touch on this later in my presentation, but um, we are going to be working a lot more closely with FEDC, and that is a huge, huge goal of ours uh, to continue to do. So thank you, Rob, for that segue there. Um, I'm Cooper Trahern, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I've been the chamber president for uh, about a month now, so I'm, I'm very new to my position. Um, thank you all for taking the time out of your evening to come. Um, our, our theme for this year was 2020 vision. Uh, we had a lot of big plans, a lot of big initiatives that we were working on uh, prior to COVID. Uh, obviously, um, everybody has been affected by it, uh, the, the chamber specifically has been affected greatly because of, uh, largely what we do is networking and helping our businesses out. So um, some things that I'll touch on is uh, looking at our, our statistics over the last two years, a lot of the activities that our staff and our board members um, have engaged in. Our staff has done an excellent job uh, supporting our members any way that they possibly can, um, along with some of our, our plans for future activities. Uh, if you look at these statistics over the last couple of years, um, tourism being one that I pay a lot of attention to, uh, through the first 10 months, we were almost on track with what we did last year. Uh, our, our move from the Peabody has helped a lot, uh, a lot more foot traffic on Maine, and our staff has also done a great job of revamping some of the ways that we are reaching out to some of our members and, and helping drive tourism. Um, some highlights through 2020, uh, we had our annual banquet in January as we do every year. We had uh, record numbers um, 
And pre-COVID, we also had record numbers of members. Um, we had uh, close to 420 members, which is, is more than the chamber has ever had in the past. Uh, we had the visitor's cabin, um, as you all know, and um, our last member of the month before COVID, we also had record attendance. So there was some really good things going on at the chamber. Uh, then March rolled around, and um, we all know the effects of, of COVID, and um, our staff had gone above and beyond uh, reaching out to businesses through our e-blasts, um, different personal contacts. They beat the streets going and talking to all the, these businesses, helping them out and uh, ramped up our social media marketing on Facebook and also on our website. And uh, I think one of the, the biggest things that our staff did, and uh, they really stepped up and helped the uh, Royal Gorgeous online auction. And a lot of that, the behind the scenes work was largely driven by our staff. Um, I, w I won't touch on all of these, um, but I think the, the major points that I wanted to touch on are the, uh, the visitor center that um, the contract with the city largely goes towards uh, the visitor center. It is, um, it is manned by volunteers, which it is our, uh, our goal for the upcoming year to continue to do that. A lot of the volunteers that we currently have are uh, considered high risk and don't know how interested they will be in manning that. So um, with, if, if given the opportunity to continue with the contract with you guys, uh, we would have to revamp the way we're manning the uh, tourist cabin and we would have to cover the expenses with a paid employee. Um, I'll, uh, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll skip through some of these. Um, another thing that we're looking at doing in the uh, in the near future is the Parade of Lights, as you all know, has been canceled. And so we are looking at that as a time to unify uh, some of the relationships that the Chamber has with other community agencies and um, continue to drive unity with FEDC, with um, the city, and uh, specifically the businesses downtown who normally get the foot traffic because of the parade, who no longer will. Sorry, this is not working very well. Um, some of the things that we're doing now is we are, uh, we added additional weekly membership spotlights and um, we are really trying to help our members focus on different ways to uh, start a website or other things that since um, COVID hit that they were not able to do. Uh, we have revamped a lot of our billing processes. We are offering a lot of discounts to members. We're allowing them to pay monthly, quarterly, or semi-annually, which has been a great help in retention of our members. Uh, we also have a new wave of board members that have come on. And um, in the past, the, uh, the contacts with the businesses has mostly been staff. And all of these volunteer board members that we have are uh, really ramping up the personal touches with all of these different businesses and, and going out and talking to these business owners individually and also on the phone. Um, we do our weekly radio shows and chamber chats on Facebook. Um, the most recent one, uh, Gift Chateau, was supposed to host our uh, business after hours, and unfortunately we had to cancel that. So we uh, put together a little um, video for them and blasted it out to our members so they could still get that recognition and that, that networking that they would have gotten otherwise. Um, I mentioned the partnership with FEDC. Uh, prior to COVID, one of our big initiatives was to um, ramp up, we were going to call it Chamber University, and we were going to have a lecture series from experts around the community um, to give to all of our members on, on things such as customer service, uh, social networking, and, and marketing, uh, building a business plan, and um, things along those lines that we were unable to do. And so, um, We've talked with Rob and, and FEDC, and uh, our focus is going to be on using Slack and to help drive out some of this information to our members and, and other businesses around the community as well. So 
Um, with that being said, I'll, I'll open the floor up to any questions. Council Member Meisner. Uh, I'll start with, I think last year, I guess it wasn't last year, maybe it was two years ago when we started the contract with the visitor center. We actually had an agreement in terms of what the expectations was. I think that's only a couple of years old. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where I'm going here, but, but the city at the time felt like that we needed some kind of an agreement relative to the visitor center because it seemed like um, while we were paying for that, we had no control or there was seemingly not much um, accountability for what was happening at that, at that visitor center. So as you move forward with trying to staff that, I think that's one of the things that needs to be recognized and maybe chatting with Ryan in terms of what are some of the current expectations from the city in terms of what we would want, what we want from that visitor center. Yeah, because since then uh, we've, we actually produce basically separate financials and different metrics that we track that are specifically related to the tourism cabin that we send over to Ryan monthly. So um, I think that we already have that in place and that helps hold us accountable uh, with, with the funds, so. Okay. Council Member Smith. <clears throat> um, I just wanna give you an opportunity to maybe have like a little commercial here. If you're not a chamber member, it, if you could talk to those people that you would want to be chamber members, what are the benefits of becoming a member of the chamber and the things that you guys offer? Yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot of what we do is networking driven. Um, we have a lot of members within the community that don't even know the, the chamber where it's located. And so um, I think one of the biggest things that the chamber provides is strength in numbers. Um, a lot of the business after hours and the resources that we provide on a weekly basis help give members opportunities at things that they wouldn't uh, otherwise have, such as um, PPP, resources for COVID. So um, I, I would say um, largely everything is driven on strength in numbers. So Awesome. And, and I have to say I'm disappointed as a chamber member that I haven't received my 2020 sticker for my window. <laughs> so I'll be looking forward to getting that. Yeah, we'll get you that. We'll get you I'll that. deliver it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Meisner. Uh, I've had involvement with the chamber over the years, somewhat indirectly, but uh, I'll try to say this diplomatically. There seems to be the lack of cohesiveness between the chamber and the multiple downtown merchant groups that we seem to, uh, to have every year or every six months. It would be nice, at least from my perspective, that if we could have a chamber uh, that could truly represent and, and make some progress with the downtown businesses. And I realize you represent all of the businesses in the community and more specifically those within the chamber. But it would seem like somebody, maybe you as a new president, could change something that I haven't seen in the years that I've been here is more cooperation and I'm gonna say cohesiveness between the chamber and the downtown merchants. It seems like we're always on different pages. Yeah, I and, couldn't agree with you more. And walking to different leaders. Yeah, um, I actually spoke with Madam Mayor about that and I met with, with Rick and Ryan as well. That has been one of the biggest obstacles as a chamber is the divide between the downtown businesses and basically the rest of town, which is something that I really wanna to look to do. Um, Beginning with the parade of lights and the window decorating, I felt that Christmas would be a great opportunity to bring these different organizations and, and business leaders all together, and that would be a great start. Um, part of the unity that I mentioned earlier is largely driven on the small business owners downtown. I mean, I'm sure you have all heard some, some mistru mistruths and some drama that has occurred over the last few months, and I really have no interest in <laughs> discussing that. But my major focus is moving forward, and that is unifying the downtown businesses along with the Greater Chamber and all of our members. And, and I will back that up, that I have been in um, recent meetings with changer, or 
chamber board members and that is one of their major priorities in the future is looking for ways to build bridges create unity and as a city we're partnering in maybe some resources that can help create that unity for Canyon City as a whole. Um, Council Member Dennehy. And, and I was going to expand on that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Cooper, and, and, and for the rest of us on Council, I'm also a board member on the Chamber, so. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I know there's been some divisions and, and uh, you know, and some of it, when I really looked at it, it was unfortunately you know, after my surgeries and that when a lot of the different things happened and, you know, really everybody just needs to sit back and go, hey, really what does the chamber do? And, and, and I know we need to get this downtown thing and, and we've all discussed this, but you know, and, and, and then just bring everybody together because, you know, unfortunately we've all seen it. There's the downtown, no offense, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what we're talking about. There's this and then we have the rest. And you know, if we can all come together, we're all one group working, stri striving for this main thing. And, and I, I know the other day at our meeting, Cooper was talking about this and, and I think all the board members and, and everybody working at the chamber even is, is working to bring our community together and to, to come up with new things and working with FEDC and that is is one of the things that is fantastic. But I, I see the potential right now in, in the plans and, and just the enthusiasm on the board of what the chamber's gonna be doing. And, and like Cooper was saying, you know, it's no longer the board being idle, idle. let's get out and Let's get out and talk to every business and all of us just start sharing and, and just expand what, what the chamber does. Yeah, to that point, um, my mentality, I mean, basically since I moved back to Canyon City, it was to really help drive growth in Canyon and, and make it a place that my, my kids are proud to grow up in. And this whole stigma of downtown versus the rest of businesses is definitely not helping that. And uh, so my mentality has been one rise, we all rise. And so whether, if Canyon is growing without the growth of downtown, then it's it's not really growing. So we got to grow these businesses downtown and get everybody working towards the same goal. So. Thank you, Councilmember Hawkes. And I'm I'm going to piggyback on Mr. Meisner's comments earlier. You know, with the experience that I had with the chamber when I was mayor, when I was on council, and everything else. And I'm glad to hear some of the stuff I'm hearing tonight from people that are on the on the chamber right now. It's always been, the philosophy is we just take care of our members and that's it, you know. If, if you want us to look at you, join, and then we'll look at you. And, you know, and, and that's, the wrong, that's the wrong idea. And I'm glad to hear what you're saying and some of the other people are saying because that stigma was there for quite a while, almost like the stigma that the city had not being business friendly, okay? <laughs> It was almost the same thing that, you know, the chamber's not, you know, friendly in that sense. And, I, and like you say, whether you're a member or not, you know, shouldn't make a difference. But I think if you people look at it and do what you say they're going to do, those who aren't a member may become a member and all that. And, it, it, and it's, a, it's a tough time right now to try to recruit new members with, with the COVID and everything else. But if the mentality focuses that way that you know whether you're a member or not you're part of this community but if you join us with us you know we're here to help you we're here to help everybody else we're here to help the, all the business in canyon city because that helps the whole community with regards to that so like i say i'm i'm glad i'm hearing some of the stuff you're hearing saying mr Dennehy, i'm glad you know he mentioned what he's mentioning and that's the right focus so you know, kudos to you, your young man. Don't let the pressure get you gray hair like me, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm wearing a hat. I'm starting to lose my hair, I think. <laughs> Um, one of the things I think is important to mention is the buy local campaign that we're doing and it's largely driven with downtown merchants and a lot of the resources that we provide to chamber members for free we're providing to other businesses who aren't members at a discounted rate that way it's still advantageous to be a chamber member to keep operations going so. and in case council didn't know um, we're part the chambers partnering with Tom Dixon our small business manager to promote the small business local I've seen the outline I love it it's gonna be awesome yeah uh, mayor pro tem Hamrick the um, the chamber uh, 
for years ran a leadership training program. Are you familiar with that? Is yes. that still is that still ongoing? Uh, it was scheduled for 2020. Uh, obviously, plans got pushed. Our plan today, right now, is to hold that in some capacity in 2021. Um, we don't know what that looks like yet, but it will happen in 2021 in one way or another. I I, I would just like to talk about that a little bit because when I first moved uh, to Canyon City, uh, the I was working for a company. That whose customers were all exterior uh, to the city, the county, and and pretty much the state, uh, and so there was there was not a, a, a strong business connection with with um, with Canyon City. But I was fortunate enough to go through that um, leadership training program in 2006, uh, really 2005, 2006. My fellow classmates included Beth Ketchmar. Uh, Chris Webb, uh, Judy Lonas, uh, people that, uh, that were significant uh, contributors and are significant co contributors uh, to, our, uh, to what we have here both in the county and the city. Uh, and I would just like to, you know, say that that is one of the most positive things that, uh, that, that, that the chamber uh, can do, I believe, because what, what that program did is it took you around to the different segments in our, in our county here that included law enforcement, included the prisons, uh, included businesses, included government, uh, included health and human services. And it was, and it was and sitting down for a day uh, and listening to the leaders in each of those segments uh, discuss what they were doing and how they were doing it. And, the, the, the different ins and outs of their, their particular segment uh, in our society here was really invaluable, uh, and I believe that it, it will contribute to value in the future and something that I really would uh, like to, to see. And, you know, the, um, the, 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 even for people that have lived here, uh, you know, a substantial part of their lives or, uh, you know, for a number of years, there is so much that goes on that is not really truly visible unless you get around and uh, can go through a program like that to to meet and greet and see what exa exactly is going on. It's, it's just an invaluable program. Definitely. And, and one of the names you mentioned, Chris Webb, uh, she's our director and has been for 16 years now. And uh, she uh, was planning on being here, but it wasn't feeling too well. Um, but uh, yeah, she has really grown that program and it is definitely an asset to the community that we continue to plan on doing. Council Member Meisner. I'll just go back and reiterate this, this uh, cooperation or uh, between the chamber. I mean, where we've grown as a city, unfortunately, is I think uh, the downtown groups I may get hatcheted for this. The downtown groups and the chamber can't seem to get those people together. So we've gone out to hire people as part of our staff to try to do it. And as, as at least I believe, most of those programs are better run by the businesses than they are by our government because, just because we're government. We need to fix that. I mean, Rick will hopefully continue to work with you and our What's our downtown coordinator? What's he called? Small business manager. Small business manager. Um, that individual or that position needs to have an intricate involvement with the chamber to try to get that whole process working. And then on the negative note, uh, you've mentioned the Christmas parade a couple of times in, in terms of that being a maybe a glue, but just be careful. I mean, the downtown, if there's 37 businesses downtown, that's 37 independent entrepreneurs that all believe that they've got the best idea and that they should run their business like they feel. And I don't know how you overcome that to get all those people to believe that there's some value in, in everybody kind of grouping together. And I think that fundamental concept has burdened that whole downtown community for 20 years. That we need to find a way to overcome that obstacle. And just because you build it doesn't mean that they're gonna come. So yeah. I'll do what I can. Well, thank you. Um, 
the spooktacular event, event, for example, that was moved to Harrison School, the, the chamber took the blame for that moving. And um, so this negative stigma that's flying out there, that's not even a chamber event, but unfortunately right. we got the brunt of that. And I mean, the city knows better than anybody. Sometimes they're just the person to blame. And unfortunately, the, that's been the chamber in a lot of cases. And so we're really trying to remove any negative stigma about the chamber, uh, uh, specifically with those downtown merchants. Um, some of the ideas that we've had, uh, rather than just a one-night event or, or one day, um, we're looking at maybe a month-long event that'll promote this. So some things that we've done in the past are small business bucks that um, they can use at all of these different businesses, and it is all organized by the chamber. And we've also had different uh, scavenger hunts that if you go into each of these different businesses and get a sign, then you get a prize from the chamber. Um, that helped drive the foot traffic downtown immensely. So uh, something like that will happen throughout the month of December. What, what that looks like exactly, we don't know at the moment. So speaking of small business bucks, I'm gonna need some of those for the um, virtual Christmas tree lighting. We have some incentives that we're gonna to put together. So let's talk. Yeah, later. definitely. Yeah. Council Member Dennehy. Um, I kind of wanna just go off of what Jim was saying because the, the one other thing that Jim that I see is the downtown businesses and everybody outside of business. And, and I found this out a lot during small business revolution because I went and talked to all the businesses outside of Main Street. <laughs> and what they felt compared to, except for Brandon's business, of course, but um, you know it, what they felt is they are completely excluded from anything with the city. And, and they did, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, even Larry down at the winery said this. And uh, you know, and, and that's the feeling is our businesses outside of Main Street feel that they're left out from the city. And, and I think that's where the mix is, is where we cannot, we, d we definitely have to concentrate on downtown. There's no doubt on that. But we also cannot forget the other businesses throughout the town because if you look at the percentages, you know, look, look where the percentages of, of where our sales tax comes from. And, yeah, but, it's, and, it's I, and I'm not saying forget about them, but let's, <laughs> let's, we've got to figure out a way to work toward all of them. And, and I think that's the most important thing. Downtown is very important but we also need to, we cannot lose face with the other businesses in town. Thank you, Council Member Dennehy. Um, I'd like to give, as we are wrapping up, an, another commercial maybe for the Chamber of Commerce. When COVID first hit, I was a brand new mayor. We had a brand new um, city administrator. We hadn't even, we were just barely doing interviews for the economic development manager position and definitely was a, you know, a deer in the headlights moment. And one of the first places I called to join the, my small business COVID-19 task force was the Chamber of Commerce. And I will say absolutely that the staff completely stepped up to the plate. They were total rock stars, couldn't have done it without them. They're a key player in helping our businesses stay alive during this emergency. And, but I have to further say that the emergency isn't over, I mean, we're technically, not technically, but we're still in ICU, really, for our businesses and, and looking forward to still keeping that relationship so we can work together to keep that steady heartbeat and the retention of our businesses in Canyon City. Our economic future depends on it. And my philosophy is we, we all need to just think of the big picture of Canyon City and not get caught up in the little stuff. Let's all work together in the same direction. And I, I think we're getting there. Absolutely, yeah. And we're looking forward to continuing working with the city. And I'd also, I, uh, Haley is here. She is in charge of our member relations. She's done a great job of reaching out to all of our members. So I would like to give her the opportunity to say anything if, if there's something I'm, I missed, if that's all right. Yeah, I mean, it's been an honor to work at the Chamber. I've been there for about six months now and have been working with the members for about the last two and a half months. And I have just really actually enjoyed meeting the members that I have. And actually, I mean, I am stepping out into this, all of the businesses, really, to try, to try to touch base with them, just to say hello, just to say we're out there. Um, and, you know, one of the things about the, the commercial for the Chamber and while the chamber offers a lot of benefits for our members, 
Um, it's also an opportunity for members to just be a support of the community, too, um, because, um, you know, we, there, there is a lot of um, tourism efforts that we put out with the visitor's guide and whatnot. Um, so so there, there is that element of being a member of the chamber. It's, it's, a, it's an overall support of the community, too, which I think is very important. Um, and um, we have remained strong in our membership. We still have, even with COVID, we're still seeing a steady increase or a steady influx of new members. So I think that's very encouraging. And we, um, we are sitting just right under 400 still. So I think that's, I think that's a great testament to, to what the chamber does and what they offer their members and um, the strength of it. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Haley. Thank yeah. you, Cooper Trahern, um, Rick Harmon. Um, before I close this meeting, I do have two announcements. Um, number one, we have a meeting coming up. Um, Cindy, the, for the naming of building committees, we have an application that's come to Canyon City of um, a community group that wants to name a building in honor of, of a, a legend of Canyon City. Mayor Pro Tem is the um, head of that committee. He chairs it, but we need a council member to attend that meeting to review that application. It's a Zoom meeting, 9.30, December 2nd. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate you stepping Let up for step that. Up to the plate, Tim. Thank you. And I also, second announcement, I need Canyon City Council members to stay after this meeting so you can step up and help with our little skit for the Christmas tree lighting <laughs> concert. <laughs> and we're going to have a lot of fun with it. All right. Thank you again. This meeting's adjourned.